I think it took me around five days to decide that I want to marry Diana. Something five like days. <laughs> five. I've made a list of about 21 points of how my ideal partner would be. Like if I could choose anything in this world, how would that person be like? And he actually met all of them. Take a girl and a guy and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple, Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is Couples Synergy. Welcome back to another episode of Couples Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. Hi, I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Please check us out online at couplesynergy.com or on Facebook and Instagram at Couples Synergy. And please subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review or Send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couple Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring you our experience helping thousands of couples transform their relationships for over 20 years. You know, everyone says you should work on your relationship, but nobody teaches us how. So we've created this podcast to teach people what they can do to create the relationship they've always dreamed of. With the partner they fell in love with. On today's episode, we welcome Diana and Robert Indriish. They are the creators of Better Topics, the card game for couples, helping thousands of couples experience more love, joy, and connection. Welcome to our podcast, guys. Thank you, Thank so, you much so much for having us. So I know that you guys are out of the UK currently, right? Yes. And that's where you guys live. I wanted to just show you a little bit of something here that might make you feel a little bit at home. This is actually our home pub that we <laughs> have created. <laughs> this is where we record. <laughs> wow, we are in, okay. the, in the studio right now of our home pub, but it is a full UK pub. Wow, it actually looks like one, yes. <laughs> um, on, uh, the I phone think... booth as well, I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On uh, one of our first dates, Diana took me out to, to a British pub because I, I came to the UK because she was here. So uh, that, that was quite interesting. And she, she said, let me show you the, the British experience. You know, the... <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, interesting. Well, let's do that then. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we want to get into better topics and, you know, understand how you guys started the product and definitely, you know, talk about you know, the benefit it is for, for couples. Before we go into that, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about yourselves? How old are you and what do you do for a living and how long have you been together? Well, we, we're in our early 30s, both of us. Um, Dan is actually a, a couple years older than I am. Um, it's uh, something that uh, we laugh about sometimes, you know, um, in, uh, in various conversations. Um, we've been in a relationship for I would say um, around half a decade until now um, and let's say we we met one another a bit late because uh, especially in Diana's case uh, she really didn't want to compromise you know on on you know the partner she chose so she was like waiting and waiting and waiting <laughs> um, I, and educating I, myself in the meantime you know and yes. going on dates you know just trying to figure out exactly who will be that uh, great partner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I, the reason why I'm saying this, is that especially in her case, is because I don't know how it is locally to you guys, but in Europe, once um, a girl turns 20-something, everyone starts like, okay, who's going to be the guy? You know, who's going to be the guy? And they start talking, you know, about boyfriends and marriage and so on and so forth. And, you know parents start introducing her to everyone she doesn't want to meet, you know, sending her on awkward dates, you know, and so on and so yes. forth. And so that, that, was... that usually starts about age 25 and onwards, as you approach <laughs> close to 30, it got gets more serious and more intrusive. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so that's really interesting. Yeah, that does not happen no. in the US, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so you, in sorry, can you tell us the story of how you met? Sure. Um, so, Diana, do you want or should I? Well, I'm I'll let you one. say it. <laughs> yeah, I think you said it a million times. So let me do yes. it. Um, so 
I was in Mexico um, as my residence when we met. Um, however, we are both born and raised in a specific part, part of Romania, which is the western part of Transylvania. So that's where we're born around six hours away from the castle everyone knows and has heard about, right? So uh, driving, right? So it's very close to us. Um, we, we were born there, however, um, let, let, me, let me say like full context so that you guys understand how weird this actually gets. So okay. we were born, weird. yeah, we, we were born in two very, very small cities, like towns, like two small towns few thousand people right population and then when we were both 14 so obviously she's turned 14 before i did but when we were 14 we both left our parents homes because we couldn't take it anymore you know, that's just how we are we're like no we <laughs> can't stay here and we're like actually we need, no you know. so <laughs> basically when uh, you turn 14 and you start high school yeah. We, we tend to move away to the main city because of better schools. Yeah. And either, yeah. you know, we stay in boarding schools or, um, you know, just renting, basically. So basically at 14, we did move out of our parents' house. Um, so, so by yeah. the way, this is very common. So this isn't yeah. something that, uh, you know, we did. This is common for people, uh, families in small towns to send their children to big cities, right, to, to learn there and so on. Um, but Dan and I really wanted to go. It's not like we were forced, you know, like we couldn't wait, you know, to go because our, our, when, where we grew up is are very small. It's like, there is the same five people you see every single day for years, you know? So <laughs> you, at one point, you know, you want, you want something more, or at least we did. And so and we were looking forward to that. And so we moved to the exact same city in high schools that were, a few minutes apart walking from one another, like maybe 15 minutes apart walking. And then after that, we went to university in the same city, in oh. the same university, but at different faculties. I, I, I did engineering, she did law, right? And so for over eight years, we were in the same city hovering around and we've never and, met one another, yeah. right? And so we probably, we, we have a lot of theories that we've probably like been in the same places at the same time because we know the same place where we used to go out in the same, you know, clubs and so on and so forth. So we probably met, but we never actually knew one another. And then she went to the UK uh, when she finished her studies and I went to Mexico. <laughs> so we couldn't have been more apart almost, right? And at one point, in uh, a blessed and year five of, years later <laughs> exactly in 2017 it was we both went home at the same time for vacations right oh. so we went home and because so typically when i go home or when i used to go home from mexico i used to stay several months you know like one two three months because then when i would leave i'd leave for like six months at a time you know not meet anyone and so on so i would do like a mix between the two places so i would i i came home and i was just you know hovering around whatever doing business as usual and then diana came um and an issue is that she stays very little and the internet wasn't working in her like the modem like like whatever they had the you know, wi-fi parents the Wi-Fi, yes, exactly. The Wi-Fi wasn't working. Which, by and the so, way, is still not fixed to this day, so. <laughs> <laughs> but what what the issue is, is that because, you know, she was in the UK, she could, didn't really have internet otherwise. So she only had internet at home, theoretically, but not even there she had it because there was no Wi-Fi. So she was like, I can't live without internet for like two whole weeks. Like, let's just fix this. And so... You know, uh, they didn't know how to fix it. They called someone that they, like Diana called someone that, you know, they knew that they weren't available. So I said, let me send someone else, someone that knows this stuff. And so that was me. <laughs> I said, okay, because, you, you know, like you go into engineering school and you learn how to create complex circuits, you know, and motherboards and robots and drones and all of that good stuff. So that people invite you to their home so you, you reinstall Windows, right? That's <laughs> that's as far as it gets, you know. So that's what people think we do as engineers, you know, reinstall Windows and fix Wi-Fi. So you were the cable guy. 
<laughs> yes, I, yeah, I, I was like the cable guy. So I was invited to fix it. And it really had issues, like it wasn't set up properly. And I fixed all of that. And I fixed everything. And three hours later, it wasn't working. And I, I, I was upset. Like, I mean, I was pissed because here I am, I have proper schooling in engineering. Like I literally can't know how to build the Wi-Fi. Like I could build it from scratch <laughs> and I can't fix the Wi-Fi to work on their computer. Right. So I, I was like, I was fuming. Like, uh, did you try not... turning off and turning it back on? Again? Yes. <laughs> yes. All, all of the good stuff. Yes. So we did that. But I actually went into it. I changed its core settings. I did all of that. Changed the domains. They changed everything. The IP. The everything I had to do. And I kept doing that. I kept playing around with it. And so it didn't work. Obviously, three hours later, I said, "You know what? I give up. Let, let me. I don't know what to do. I swear I'll buy you a new modem tomorrow, like a new Wi-Fi, because this is just you know. Let me let me let me do that for you, right? Let me get the new Wi-Fi." um so that never happened you know uh, spoiler spoiler you know what diana <laughs> just said earlier however something that was weird and we figured it out on that same day like not like i imagine i was there uh, an engineer with schooling trying to fix this for three hours and then i gave up at one point because i just couldn't like i couldn't and we went to the kitchen and in the meanwhile i kid you not diana's brother very intelligently pulled the cable out of the Wi-Fi. Bear in mind, he has not, no engineering uh, Yeah, no, nothing, nothing. Experience is like, or anything. No, he pulled the cable out and put it back. That's the only thing he did. And it worked. <laughs> That's it. That was the only thing. And like, I can't believe it. And then I checked and the cable was broken a bit right at the end. So it wasn't connecting properly. So I tried plugging it in and out a few times, but it was literally like the way he plugged it in, it would just work. So we realized it's not the Wi-Fi, it's the cable, right? So it was an issue with the cable. And I was like, okay, fine. Uh, we had a good laugh about it. And then I left. Um, and we Interestingly didn't really think enough, uh, yeah. When he left after those three hours, my dad was like this very chilled guy and he didn't really pay much attention to what we were doing. He just like, you know, in his very calm way, he was like, I think this Wi-Fi will actually need fixing tomorrow as well, but at least another three hours. Because I think then he explained later on that mm -hmm. the way we, the way he looked at us, how we communicated with each other, you know, with Robert from the very beginning, bear in mind, it was the this first, is the time, first time we met. Seen him. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, he said there was something there that you guys hit it off so well. Like he was like, mm -hmm. I just enjoyed watching you guys talk to each other. Did you guys know that or feel that? Not then. I don't think I so. did. Yes. Or she did. Maybe. Yeah. Diana. But uh, yes. Like the me, minute I, was... I saw him, I was like, oh, my God, this is him. <laughs> wow. He's the one. <laughs> He's the one. <laughs> I, I, okay, I was the one from day one, but I was also taken on day one, right? So oh. I was in another relationship, you know, so it really wasn't to be. So this is why it gets so weird, like yes. incredibly, incredibly weird. I was actually going to propose to someone else. Uh, wow. I was very ready to, to make the move and to do all of that. So long story short, a few weeks and Diana and I just kept talking like friends long story short a few weeks after that I went back to Mexico and my girlfriend at the time was already like hinting for like a year now of like you know is it time or what are you know I mean I'm sure you you guys know this stuff and so it's okay yeah I feel it's time as well and then she realized it's very serious. Like she realized that this is about to happen, right? Somehow, you know, like we were discussing whatever. And one of the, I think one of the things that uh, made her say that is because uh, I, I booked an entire 10 day trip to Cancun for both of us in like the most expensive resort there, you know, all expenses paid, you know, flights and everything and so on. And I think that tipped her off because I normally don't do stuff. We normally discuss this stuff, right? Like, where are we going to go? Uh, you know, how are we going to budget for that and so on? And this time I just went all out and, and got that. And so I think that that put her off or not, not put her, but that, you know, um, you know, made her think about it. And then she asked, you know, like, you know, what are we going to do? I said, well, we're going to have fun. And like, yeah, but why there? 
you know, why specifically in that very expensive place for 10 days, you know, you didn't, we didn't talk about it, you know, so we talked about it and then she realized what's going on. And then I think she had some very serious thoughts in her brain mm -hmm. uh, where it, like this is becoming like very serious, right? And so this was five years in to the relationship, right? And so um, we then had some very serious discussions in the next few days after that. So I, this is me arriving to Mexico Thursday evening. And by Sunday evening, we were broken up. No, wow. yeah. It. Because it's like three days of intense conversations of, mm -hmm. okay, what are we going to do? Is this going to happen? Is this, you know, and so on. She even asked me to show her the ring. I'm like, I'm not going to show you anything, you know? So we just kept going. And at one point when we decided that, okay, we're going to, you know, this, let's not, let's, you know, just go our separate ways. Then I actually did show her the ring, you know, and, you know, that made her cry. That made me cry. You know, like we were just sobbing for like three days because it was a five-year relationship, right? Mm -hmm. I think we ended it very maturely, as maturely as it can get as, you know, two adults crying like babies for three days. But that that's the level, you know, at which we were. Um, and, and all we during really, this time, you yeah. were still remaining friends with Diana. We were, I mean, it, it wasn't a big deal. I the mean, thing Diana is, was one person in my life and I was one person in her life. You know, it, uh -huh. it didn't really You see, the thing it. is, when we've met, we really hit it off very well, you know, like amazingly well. And yeah. I was here like, you know, searching for my perfect partner and I saw Robert and that in itself. Now, I respected the fact that, you know, he was in a relationship and that he was committed to that relationship. And although we hit it up so well, so well uh, from the very beginning, I did respect his decision, you know, to actually stay faithful and all of that, yeah. which, you know, counted a lot. And um, we still stayed friends because I still felt that he's a person that I could learn from, which still I believe to this day. And also, I was very happy at that moment in time, even if nothing would have come of our relationship, only to the fact that there actually are men exactly the way I would want them to be, you know, for me as a partner. So even just that, to have an example that, yes, I'm not crazy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> with all of the things that I want from my perfect partner, it's actually possible. Confirmation. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, and confirmation. and what, were, what were some of those things? That you were looking for. Oh, that's another um, story. I'll, I'll yes. Let, I'll let so Diana I've actually made a list about a couple of months before yeah. actually meeting Robert. I've made a list of about 21 points of how my ideal partner would be. Like if I could choose anything in this world, how would that person be like? What would their values be and all of that? And I had only like 21 points and he actually met all of them. And he has a lot of other really, really nice uh, characteristics to him that I didn't even think of including in my list, but I do appreciate him having them. So some of them are family values because these are very important for me. You know, someone who is close to his family and is willing to accept my family as his own as well. Someone who is very um, business orientated, but not necessarily have businesses, but at least be that type of personality who is always striving to be better and learn and move forward instead of just staying in a mediocre job that is not fulfilling for him. You know, I didn't really care what job as long as he's fulfilled and passionate about what he was doing. Interestingly enough, Robert is super passionate <laughs> <laughs> about what he's doing. Um, you know, even things like knowing how to dance um, yeah. and you know, a lot of things, a lot of things. I actually don't really remember all of my list, but I do remember that family values were one of the most important ones. Um, even down to things like, you know, dark hair and, you know, eyes, I didn't really care, but I wanted someone with like dark hair. And, you know, a lot of things that just uh, sprung to my mind when I just thought about it one night, I actually made that list. And I was like, okay, if I meet someone who will meet at least 75% of my list, like I don't need the full list necessarily, but at least 75%, I'll be okay with that. <laughs> so after Robert's relationship broke up, did you just run him through a test and make sure that he <laughs> met all 21 characteristics? Well, the thing is um, when we were talking, you know, when, when we were still back home um, and we went out, you know, as friends a few times um, and through our discussions, you know, I was like directing them towards those things. and. He, I just remembered my list and I was taking them in my head. And I know for some, um, it might seem a bit too 
clinical because you know you think about all these things and is he taking your list but on that list as well was passion and attraction for me as well and I was very attracted to him from the very beginning again respecting the fact that he was in a relationship um but I literally had everything on my list passion as well you know and like that attraction that uh, most people are looking for in the beginning as well so Robert how do you go from just maintaining a friendship with Diana to having romantic feelings for her? Well, that's a, so I'm, I'm a bit strange uh, as in um, I'm, I'm very, very, I'm very one-sided. Um, I think, you know, things like commitment, loyalty, honesty, ethics, I think these things are missing in many people's lives because they feel that if they have those, they're missing out or, you know, that, you know, they're, they're not going to get ahead or whatever. And I, I don't like that. I really, um, I fight against it every single time. And I, when I can, I've had, you know, over 10,000 coaching clients until now. And, you know, each one of them, I try to ingrain this very, very strongly. So for me, loyalty is outstandingly important. It's like, it's, it's, and commitment to some, like, if I say, okay, I will go in a business with Ray. Okay. And this is how we're going to do it. You're stuck with me. It's like, literally it's that bad. You know, it's like, I've committed to do this. Let's make it work. If we commonly decide, let's not waste our time, which is sometimes the case, right? And you, you shouldn't push things that shouldn't happen, right? However, I'm very committed. So in the relationship that I had previously, we've had so many issues, so many arguments. She was, you know, the typical Latina girl that you see in telenovelas all the time with the family and the dramas everywhere and so on. That's their life. That is like, they, I kid you not, the, the movies do not de depict, de depict the intensity of emotion that is being felt by those people on a week by week basis. <laughs> I do not know how they survive. Right. It's, it's, it's from the outside. It's nice. It's like interesting to see, right. The dynamics and so on and so forth. Every week, it felt like the entire family is breaking apart and then, but then nothing would happen and then everyone would be fine. And then the entire family would break up again. And then, you know, everything would be fine. And I couldn't understand it. They themselves were very happy, always very happy, you know, like, no, no problem. And they really loved one another. It's just, I don't understand. It is so much drama, so much about useless things. And so for me, that was weird. You know, I'm the type of guy like, you know, one plus one equal two, you know, I'm the engineer, you know, I was like, no, like, why are we even discussing this? You, you want to go, let's just go there. I don't care. You know, <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's so, also a part of Romanian culture. Is that correct too? You mean? Uh, it is, reserved. but not the yes. same intensity. Yes. Yeah. So um, it is, um, you have a mix because we have Latin in our veins, you know, and, and we have very logical, you know, very straightforward type of discussions as well, you know, so it's like really, really in, in the middle. We can get along with uh, people in Latin America as well as people in Germany, you know, like we're literally smack in the middle. <laughs> so um, I had that and I, stepped, I kept being committed, committed and committed, but we would agree on very specific fundamentals. Like for example, Mexico is a very dangerous place to live, like outstandingly dangerous compared to many of the first world where I was, you know, like in 10, 17 different countries I visited, anywhere we could live. Why would I live in a country where so many things happen? I don't want to tarnish the podcast by giving examples, but in the mm -hmm. five years I've been there, crazy insecurity, you know, crazy amounts of poverty and so on and so forth. So a beautiful country, by the way, it's like amazing country. And I've lived there for a few years. But for example, one of the principles we said, if we're going to raise children, why would we do it here? Like why? Like mm -hmm. we can ingrain the Mexican culture, the values, the beauty, the appreciation for nature, the appreciation for the, um, the background and so on and so forth in a country where my child can go outside at 3 a.m. And I'm, I'm not scared of that happening, you know? So um, we agreed in principle on many things, but then when it came to the day of, okay, we're really gonna start a family together, then it changed. So up until that day, I was incredibly committed. So this is, I'm coming back to your question. I didn't even think of Diana as a potential partner. It didn't even pass my mind because I was so, 
seeing just in one direction, right? And that is how my brain operates. It's either one or zero. I meant to be an engineer. It's like literally it's one or the other. You, there is no middle ground in, in logic. You know, there's one or the other. So I'm either loyal and committed or I am not, right? It's, it's, it's one or the other. So um, I know like you can go wrong and you can go astray and you can do stuff like that. And I understand. And I also understand how easily you can bounce back from something like that because you talk it through and, you know, you fix anything that was broken and so on. Perfectly understand that. I'm just saying as a mental logic, I didn't even consider her. So probably that's why I didn't fall in love because I what mentally I wasn't allowing myself to, because I think that's also something important that people on your podcast probably understand, right? Is that once you decide to be with someone that does tick all of your boxes and you're passionate about them and so on and so forth, that doesn't mean that for the next 50 years of your life, you're not going to see other potential prospects. It's, this doesn't work like that. Like might be better, might look cuter, might, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just, it, that doesn't mean, you know, that those won't be there, but you need to decide, okay, I've made my decision. This, and if I do not want to keep my decision, well, guess what? I need to talk about it, right? I don't need to go behind anyone's back. I don't need to, you know, be unfaithful. I don't need to do all of that. If I feel that my current relationship isn't, um, you know, satisfying myself or what I envision, from a relationship, guess what? I need to talk to my spouse, not push them away even further, right? Because maybe, you know, we'll have a productive conversation on the subject, right? So So do you remember the moment that you decided to be committed to Diana? Yes. Um, I, so this, this goes to the next part of our story. So I stayed, uh, so after that, I went back home. I then sort so of. So after uh, he broke up with his yes, partner, basically, after, after that's where up, he yeah. left off the story. <laughs> yeah. Then I went. I went back home. I, so I was like mourning for the relationship that we used to have, you know, for like a, a month. So I was mourning. I was there, you know. Uh, I was talking to people, you know, sharing emotions, have going back and forth. And then, um, at one point, um, I kept remembering the how well i felt with diana Mm -hmm. right i just that kept being in my brain so i think somewhere in my subconscious maybe i did fall in love but then i didn't allow myself to feel that right because something kept i know a lot of girls (laughs) you know and i've never had an issue with that you know i've always had you know a lot of prospects let's say but for some reason i kept thinking of diana you know like uh, that, that for me it was like she was there and at one point, I was talking with her on WhatsApp or whatever we were talking on. I can't remember. And I was like, you know what? I'm thinking of coming there and seeing if there's something to us, you know, being together or something like that. So I was very honest. And she was very honest with me. Uh, you, you don't know her personality yet, but uh, she's very, very straightforward. She's like, look, if you want to come here, it's you're either serious or you're not don't just don't just don't come here you know uh don't mess about if you're gonna come here come with very clear intentions that we're going to be together and then you know let's see if anything happens obviously it can go either way and we can discuss but uh come here to really try not to play around that was basically so the my idea right. behind that was that i knew he just you know um, came out of a five-year long relationship mm-hmm. And I told him, like, you know, maybe if you need a few months to, you know, just take it out of your system, you know, date around, play around. I don't even want to know. Just do that if you think you need to do that. But I told him very honestly, I don't have the years or the energy to, you know, just to be together and try to figure out things. And then years down the line, you're like, oh, actually, no, this is not it. So I didn't want to be his rebound person, basically. Mm -hmm. So in, in my brain, I said, I like the honesty. It's, it's very refreshing from, you know, what I've been dealing with for the past five years, you know, when people were like just talking in riddles, it felt like, you know, half of the time. So this, is, this plain honesty really was refreshing. So it's okay. Yes, you know what? Like, I'm, I'm serious. And it's hard for someone to believe that, you know, from like based on how society is today. But in my case, when I say stuff like that, I actually mean it. So in my case, you know, I just went there. I I got rent somewhere close to uh, where Diana was living. And then 
Um, I said, okay, let's, you know, see how we get along. Okay. And then we started getting along. Um, and then I think it took me around five days to decide that I want to marry Diana. Something five like days. That. <laughs> like wow, like that. that's yes. really. What good. was it about it her that you fell week. in love with? So, and this is this is funny. Um, I need this recording as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, a very good questions, guys. By the way, we I don't think we've ever been asked so many. So, um, a while after this. Um, oh, by the way, I didn't make my full decision. I made my like partial decision in, in the first week. Interestingly enough, in the second week, her parents visited and with a couple of relatives. To boot, so basically you know? I threw me in a deep end because my yeah. main idea was to- Not intentionally. This was pre-planned for the parents to come at that time, right? I just so happened my, to be there, you know? Yeah, my parents were planned to be to come to the UK long before that. Yeah. And I was planning initially to delay Robert's coming till after they leave, mainly because I know my mom and she's crazy. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> so, um, you know, I thought that I don't want to scare him off from the beginning. Like, I want to see if there is anything to it. And then I'll like, you know, help him navigate knowing my mom and all of that and my family, because they are, you know, quite a handful, to be honest. And then I thought, you know, better yet, he comes a bit before that so I can help him settle in and everything. And if he can actually manage to get along with my mom, which for me, you know, is quite important because as I said, you know, I'm quite, quite close to my family. If he manages that and he doesn't get scared by that, then literally he's the one. <laughs> so this was his literally um, ultimate test, let's say so. So, um, And it also was a really good test because during that week that my parents were visiting, both me and my brother, we were working obviously full time in an office. So we were away from the house and Robert had to literally spend all the time with them without me and Alone. my brother being there wow. to alienate yeah. any discussions if there would have been any yeah this was number 21 on the list of 21 right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. and it it was strange i wasn't expecting it because they were literally at work all day and you know i own businesses i can do whatever i want with my schedule so i was literally with them all day going out with them spending time with them and so on and so forth I'm like Okay, here I am. I came to the UK to be with Diana, and now she's leaving me with with her her, her family. Like I didn't mind, you know. I actually enjoyed the entire process, but in my brain, it was like, oh, isn't that convenient for you guys? Now you have someone there, you know, to to take care of your family, you know. But, firing uh, squad. <laughs> we were we were we we had so much fun, like literally, so so much fun. We laughed about it so much, you know, because like for example, another thing that's obvious, another angle that was very funny is like they came to the UK to visit them and they were spending time with me, like almost <laughs> all of their time. So it was, there were so many funny angles, you know, and we, we laughed about all of them. And so in, I think the second or third day or something like that, whilst they were here, I, they, they were here, I was getting along so well with everyone. Like they, I was loving their family so, so much really. Like we just got along so well. We felt like family from the very beginning. And a few days in, I asked Diana in the first week, very, um, very subtly, you know, who would you say out of, you know, everyone knows your tastes, you know, and she said, you know, my mom, my mom knows my tastes. Okay, well, that's a difficult conversation to have. I said, okay, fine, I take up the challenge. And then in day like three, I was ring shopping with her mom. Oh, wow. <laughs> in, day three. Uh, yeah, <laughs> of meeting her, yeah. So we were... We were a ring shop. She didn't say a thing because like I came like, I really need your advice on something. And she's like, okay, like, okay, fine. And then I came with my laptop and I showed rings. Like I had a million, like I, I just engagement wrote engagement ring on Google. And then, you know, they were popping up. Like so you had like, actually already made your decision by day three yeah. that you wanted to marry her. Day three, day day three of family. meeting my parents, oh, which was meeting. like a week and a half after he actually came to the UK. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I made my partial decision in, in like day five, like my, for myself, but then I, I was still, you, you know, like checking stuff out and so on. I even remember talk, having a very honest conversation with my mom. I said, mom, 
I don't understand what's going on. I, I feel very strong emotions towards the girl I'm meeting. And she's like, okay, and what's the problem? <laughs> I'm like, I don't understand because I just broke up. You know, I had a five-year relationship with someone I was willing to commit my entire life to, right? How is this possible? So I had a very honest conversation with her in the first week. And she said, obviously, she's the wisest, you know, after, you know, so many years of living. She's like, uh, Robert, you know, this is how it happens. When people say that you cannot control love, this is what they mean. You know, like you can't predict this stuff and you can't, you know, make sense of it many times. So I said, okay, fine. And so then I sort of made my decision. And then five, five days after that, I already spent three days with their, her entire family. Everything went amazingly well. So I said, you know what? It's not going to get any better than like, literally this is, I hit the jackpot for whatever reason this happened. I'm going to accept it for, for the, you know, destiny or whatever it was, the coincidence of us meeting. And I'll just take it from there. Right. Um, so. So what was it that about her that you fell in love with? Yes. Uh, so now is the, the last part of the story. So I, I decided to ask her hand in marriage. That, that happened a few uh, weeks after that. However, in the meanwhile, at one point, we were um, in, in the house together. And we were just cuddling in bed, just talking and talking. At one point, she tells me about her list of 21. It was a, and then she shows me, you know, it was like one page, like she handwritten it. It was one page, still remember it. And I, I think I remember more points on the list than she does. So there's like an entire list of 21 things on, on that one sheet of paper. And I was laughing, like, and we were going through all of it. And this was so funny to me. And at one point, she's asking, like, why is this so funny to you? I'm like, well, I didn't tell you, but I have my own list that has 36 points 36. and it's seven pages long of wow. text. Of, it's like you know, an standard, essay. Yeah, it's like a huge essay of every single thing I want. Um, and I, I just had a thought that we should do a podcast with all engineers and see <laughs> how they picked their partners. <laughs> so, yeah, I had the, I had that. Uh, 36 points and they were incredibly concrete they were concrete to the Detailed. point of yeah very very detailed like to the point of physical traits of um, black hair or dark hair uh, green eyes uh, this height which like I, I have like the same height <laughs> like at this height um, these measurements everything like every like I put everything there and Even also, down to the things that uh, the languages that we speak, both of yes, us, and yes. the type of relationships we have the, with the family. So, yeah. where my list was literally just a twenty-one bullet point type of list, his list was uh, thirty-six Narrative. points. Um, yeah. described and even down to things like how I would react to certain situations. Like, and if this happens, then this she yeah. will react in this type of way and wow. that type of thing. And. Yeah. Once he showed me the list, I was literally shocked because it was so accurately describing me. I couldn't believe it. And I was like, yes, that's how I react in those type of situations. Oh, my God. Yes, that's what I think. Yes. It was yeah. very strange. Where do you guys think that came from? Like something inside of you made you guys write these lists? So I can tell you for me what it was. I know for Diana what it was. I'll, I'll let her share her story. For me, um, the difficult I had pre the, the the relationship I had previously was very difficult um, because we're very different cultures from different parts of the planet, uh, very different uh, uh, economical you know upbringings and so on. So like everything was different about us, and so it was very difficult to maintain that relationship. Still, the passion was there, right? Like we loved one another deeply. Like we really cared. We really appreciated the same things in one another, like the family values and so on and so forth. And um, at the same time, we had like these constant arguments, constantly. Like we had those those things back and forth. And so, as a person that the way I am, I'm, I'm very ambitious. I, again, I'm very committed. I want to make everything work that I truly want. Like anything that's important to me, I research, I educate myself on it. I learn, I talk to people about it and so on. 
And so at one point, um, I was studying um, how to make relationships work and stuff like that. So this put me on a journey of years of, of how to make that relationship work. And within that, I found one strategy, which I thought is brilliant. My engineer brain could just, wow. And this, this wasn't even specifically to relationships. I got this, I think it was from uh, Vishen Lakhiani from Mind Valley. He was talking about something completely different, but he, he had a three, three column, like imagine a paper and you have, two, no, he actually had two columns on it. And I had three on mine, but let me tell you about my three columns. I can't remember exactly. So one, the, on the first column, you put the point for every single thing you want in the relationship or in life or in your career or whatever, but in, let's talk relationships today. So every single point you want, and I had a lot of points. I want this and this and this and this and this. Okay. The second thing is who do you need to be to deserve that? right? Mm -hmm. So the first column is, what do I want? The second column is, who do I need to be, right, to deserve, to be deserving of that? Like, for example, if I expect someone to be, you know, stunningly loyal and committed and so on, I need to be that, right? If I expect someone to, you know, um, I don't know, care for the finances of the family, you know, and not spend ferociously and, you know, and so on and so forth, guess what? I need to be that. I can't go out and spend money like crazy and I expect my partner you know, to shoulder all of that financial struggle or whatever, you know, so, and all of all of these things, like if I expect my partner to be outstandingly hit, healthy, look good, you know, and so on, guess what, I need to be that, right? I can't, you know, just expect it and not be it. So I had a one to one list. And then on column three was, how do I need to change action steps? Like if I am not the ideal person for the ideal woman that I want in my life, what needs to change in my life right now for me to deserve this? So it's an intrinsic thing. Like I work on myself first and if I get there and I'm still not experiencing this on this end and I, I communicate clearly and so on and so forth, I just say, this is not okay. Mm -hmm. So that's actually how my list was born. Um, obviously on, on physical traits and so on and so forth, um, you know, I explained it to the best of my ability and my previous girlfriend had many of those as well. She did have dark hair and so on. She had something that I never imagined putting on my list, which was curly hair. She had curly hair and a wavy, you know, I liked it. I said, oh, I didn't think of putting that, but I'm fine either way, right? So this is something that wouldn't have gotten on my list either way. However, I always, since I was young, I loved green eyes. For some reason, I'm just blown away. Whenever I see someone with green eyes, I just want to agree to whatever they say. You know, I just, I love it, <laughs> you know? So I, I like it. Um, and, but that's something you can't expect, you know, from someone, if they don't, if they have brown eyes or blue or whatever, it just is what it is. So I wasn't too picky about that. But what's interesting about to... the list that you created is that often we tell clients, I know you tell clients all the time is become the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with. Yes. Right. Exactly. And That's once how you do that and you do that work on yourself, then you attract yeah. that into your life. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it, Diana has her story. Yeah. Obviously. Diana, how did you come up um, with your list? What I would want to add is that I made my list about a couple of months before meeting Robert. And mm -hmm. Robert actually had his list made up three years before we've actually met. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So my list was born uh, literally after reading a book, uh, Conversations with God by uh, Neil Donald Walsh yeah. and at some point he was saying in the book that we actually choose everything that we go through in life whether we do it consciously or unconsciously and that kind of freaked me out and then I started analyzing my past relationships and I realized that those partners that I had were literally the partners I asked for as in they had all the characteristics and um um personality types and everything that i requested at that time although the first ones were a bit unconsciously done the last one for example my last relationship before robert he literally was everything i uh, re requested at that point in time now that relationship ended because i realized during that relationship that those things weren't making me happy that wasn't it what i actually wanted so then i was like okay if 
if I can choose anything, you know, if I can choose my partner, like literally, how would it be? So I started writing, you know, and about halfway through it, I stopped and I was like, I don't want to be too picky or too, you know, because I mean, I don't think there is a person like this, you know, like literally to have everything that I want. But then I was like, you know what, let's just let's just get it out of my head and see, you know, how would they even look? And then, you know, I wrote all the list and then I thought, OK, even if they meet 75 percent of this list, I'll be happy with that. Um, and even so, I was still willing to negotiate on a few other points as well to take it down to 50. But again, you know, there were other points where he should have scored more than, um, you know, in order for me to give up other points. Um, and then after I uh, had my list, I literally did something very similar to what Robert did as well. You know, I, although I didn't put that down on a paper, I actually went through all the things that how would I be, you know, how would I, how would I need to behave? How would I need to, um, you know, what goals would I need to have? And all of these things, how would I need to change myself in order to be this perfect individual that would actually attract a person like that? You know, like if I'm attracted to this type of person, like the person on my list, that means that I have to also match that somehow, you know, I cannot be, and I always think of uh, energies and, you know, attraction and frequencies and all of that. And I always thought that I cannot be on a different level of frequency than what I want. Like I, I always have this imagine, uh, um, image in my head about a highway of energies. I cannot be on a lower level of a highway and then want something from a higher one because I'll never get it. You know, it's like, we'll never meet. We're like on different levels. So, yeah, I was actually going about my life and, you know, everything, trying, making changes towards that, towards becoming that um, ideal person that my ideal partner would be attracted to and um, would fall in love with. That's the perfect alignment with the law of attraction, you know, both of you guys creating that. It's almost like you guys match make yourselves. Matchmaker, <laughs> matchmaker, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so better topics. Does that is that born from these lists and these characteristics and traits um, you guys were looking for? And you know, how how did you guys decide and and come up with that idea of creating the, the card game for couples? Um, it actually has nothing to do with the lists. <laughs> okay. um, this was born, Better Topics was born years after, you know, we met and then we got married and so on and so forth. So um, on our end, um, I was, I'm an entrepreneur or business owner for a while now, um, for, for over a decade. And I currently own, you know, 10 businesses in different industries on different countries and different continents and so on. So I, this is what I love doing. I, I take my engineer brain. I say, okay, how do I engineer the perfect business? And then how do the systems need to look like? You know, how do the people need to be treated? How do client services need to look like? And so on. And so how do the products need to feel, you know, and so on. So I, I think of every, all of these aspects and I love it. However, I have free um, a discretionary time to do anything I want all day long. I glitch. I can just do anything I want, and I don't need and to be he anywhere. To work. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to be anywhere. I don't need to meet with anyone, I, and so on and so forth. And I always am passionate. I wake up in the morning. I think, well, I should. I should talk to that person. I should send this person an email. I need to create this today, and so on. And I'm already getting excited for the day. For Diana, I was the polar opposite. Because like, oh, I need to get up. Oh, I need to commute. Uh, I need to put up with that person. Oh, I need to do this and so the on. The thing is, when right? I first went to the UK, I actually started working in NHS, which is the national health system mm. um, at a local hospital. And I started from the, you know, admin assistant thing. And I worked my way up, up to management level. And I thought that once I get to management level, you know, I'll be able to change things the way I think they should be changed and improve certain things and all of that. I got there and because, you know, it's corporate, I realized that I still had managers who had their managers who had their managers and I didn't have any creative freedom. And I was here, you know, barely waking up in the morning, really hating to get off, you know, from bed and getting ready for my day and just like dreading going to work. 
And here I look at Robert, super passionate early in the morning at four o'clock. He's like waking up because, oh my God, he had some ideas. He has to write them down. And then, you know, after days of 16 hours back to back calls, he was literally without any voice left at, at that point. And still he was super pumped and excited about the projects he was working on. And I was like, how is that? Like, what is that? How does it even feel? I want to feel like that as well. Yeah. yeah I think like I talk about this a lot to all of all of my coaching clients. And I also work, work with a lot of business owners. We've coached over 300 uh, companies until now, and they've doubled or even 10 X in size right when we were work with them. And people hear me speaking about this stuff. Like people hear that, you know, I wake up early morning and then I literally conduct my entire day until the evening. And then I go to bed and, you know, like I have energy all day. I mean, you know, 12 hours of calls many times every day and so on. And I just keep doing stuff, but they never actually see me. They just envision it. You know, they fantasize about it. For Diana, she was seeing me. And I think at one point, maybe it was even annoying. It was like, how do you have so much energy all day? <laughs> You know, like what, what's that about? When I and felt so, drained after only eight hours of work. Yeah, yeah. And so she she said at one point, like, I want to do that. Like, I want to be so passionate about my work as you are, right? And I want to do something. She said, however, I don't know what to do, right? I have my bachelor's in law, right? I have my law degree. I have my experience in med uh, medical, right? Because she worked in hospitals and so on and so forth. But I don't feel I'm I'm really really passionate about either of these, right? I'm like my entire experience thus far, I don't I don't feel that's where it is, and I don't know what I'm good at. So guess what? We brainstormed, we talked about it, and so on. And so something I like to do is I like to go on walks, meditation walks, and then when I walk for like an hour and I think of stuff, and I give myself like something to think about at the beginning of the walk, and then I come up with ideas, I write them down. And I was thinking, you know, what we could do like what she could do, what Diana could do. And um, something that I um, realized because she was like, I don't know what I'm good at. And I, I, something that I had my brain, what is Diana good at? And I was coming up with, with uh, things like what I think she would be good at. And something Luckily, that really- The list was quite extensive. <laughs> so, something that came up was um, relationships. Because I've been in, over a dozen relationships until I met her and no one was as good at maintaining the relationship, communicating within it, you know, making sure we're aligned, you know, uh, and so on and so forth. So everything felt like um, if I were uh, to get a coach on how to be in a relationship, I would hire her, right? For example, I know mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys are just as good. But I'm just saying, you know, like, <laughs> I really like this about her, right? That she was so good. Like, she really was managing the relationship amazingly. Mm -hmm. But I said, coaching is probably something she doesn't want to do, right? Because that's, that's a very different thing. Or I think she might not. I don't know. But I was thinking, like, okay, what business can come out of this? And then something else. I mean, I can show you guys. But we have, like, 50-odd board games and card games because we love them. You know, like, we have a ton, a ton of games. And we, for, for various periods, like we play a lot, a lot, a lot. And then we take like a six month break because it's the same game. So we, we get bored, but then we play them again. So it's like, uh, you know, Monopoly or Scrabble, Jenga, you know, or whatever, like all, all, of, all of these games we like. And we tried buying games for couples, like mm -hmm. card games for couples. And we bought a few and, and they were so bad, right? They're just not games. They were literally questions printed on paper that's it mm -hmm. that's all right. it was and even like that the questions many of them were one-off questions you know uh, such as you know what's your favorite parent or i don't know just like you ask that once mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and then you ask all of that deck of questions in one date night or whatever and then you can throw it away or give and it even to so for couples like us that we were together for a while now yeah um questions like what's your favorite flavor wouldn't even make sense anymore like if we've been together for you know a while and you don't know mm -hmm. how much i love chocolate we have a big problem here like these cards <laughs> cannot really help us <laughs> It cause problems. <laughs> uh, it can cause problems. Yeah. So those didn't work. And so we said, I, I bounced the idea by her, said, why don't we create a real, real game? Something that people can play every single week, 
It's relevant every single week. It helps the relationship every week. You have fun with it whilst you're playing. You know, you you get rewards at the end of it. It's like I can we can come up with so much stuff. And so we spend then the next six months inventing, perfecting, asking for feedback with other couples and so on and so forth until we got to, you know, better topics the way it is, you know, right now. And even the way it is right now is version two of that. But um, we've gotten so, so much amazing feedback. We have people playing our games in 176 countries all over the world, right? Either physical or digital right um tens of thousands of people playing it you know and giving us you know heartwarming stories on you know either as reviews testimonials or as emails it's just so cool that is really an awesome story (laughs) you guys came (laughs) up with that and you know i i appreciate hearing that you guys sat down and over six months really just kind of refined it and hammered it home because i think it really takes a, a a long process, you know, of creating something together, a merger of, of two people, right? And that's one of the things that we really talk about in, in couple synergy is that, you know, it is a, a long process of work, yeah. you know, and both people have to contribute equally into that creation. So that's really awesome. Where, where can people get a hold of better topics this game? So um, they can get the physical card games on our website, which is bettertopics.com. Um, they also have links there how to get the app. Also for the physical card game, they can get it on Amazon, UK, US, and Australia as well. And you had mentioned that the board games that you guys used to play, you get bored and you put it aside. So mm-hmm. Better Topics is designed to be evergreen. Kind of evergreen, mm-hmm. yeah? Yes. Yes, because so, um, so we've invested, you know, a lot of time, as Robert mentioned, in creating the questions. We wanted to make them repeatable, but in such a way that although the questions are basically the same every week, the answers will always change every week because what couples go through and individuals changes every week. I'm uh, something you guys might not know about me. I was an avid gamer when I was younger. Like I used to play a lot of uh, various different things. And so um, I'm used to these habit forming things like, okay, what would make someone actually play this? Like every single week or every day or digital. And by the way, Diana didn't say, but the main thing we're most excited about is our memberships. So any couple can join our memberships online and it, it's incredibly cheap. It's like the, the cheapest one is like $19 a year, right? Like it's what, like a little over a dollar a month. So uh, we have memberships and on those memberships, you get extra things such as like, for example, weekly couple challenges. So every member of the couple gets a secret challenge. They actually get three and for at random and then they need to choose one and then they need to do that. And those challenges are like, Uh, showcases of love or this is one way you can show love this week right and they're always secret and always random so it's always something new right and so if you sign up um, as a member then you get a ton of other benefits like that right and then you can use the mobile apps and and so on so um, within that in the in the physical game and you can have this as a member as well the the questions you ask for example instead of asking you know who's your favorite parent you ask things like, um, what's something I said last week that you would prefer I say differently? Yeah. Right? One thing. Yeah. One thing. It's one thing I said that you would prefer I say differently. And by the way, notice how we ask the question. Mm-hmm. Because we thought so much about how to make this always a productive conversation. Always. Like you never hear anything negative out of these questions. Like what's one thing I said last week that you would prefer I say differently. Mm-hmm. That's it. Very honest, very, you know, concrete feedback. Let me know. And they can say, well, I really don't like when you said this. And I say, okay, I got it. How, what would you prefer I say it? Like, how mm-hmm. would you prefer I say that? Another question, for example, is what's one thing you really want to do next week that you think I could maybe help you help keep you accountable for. Hmm. Oh, That's yeah. it. 
That's and it, so because definitely you never keeps have it, these discussions. You keeps know? it evergreen and it's something yes. that can continue to evolve over time. And and it really implements one of the concepts that we talk about with couples that's really important is doing new and fun things together, right? It's that new and exciting and fun things, you know, concept that's really important to keeping a relationship alive. So, it, you know, this, congrats guys, this is a really great product. And, you know, one of the things that we, we always are encouraging our couples to do is have date night and quality time together. And this is really a great way of yep. infusing that quality time together. So last question, <laughs> what is it that your partner does that you know they love you? Um, Ooh, Dana, many things. Um, yeah, we do so many things. We just, yes. So the thing is for us too, it's a lot about the small things that we do regularly for each other. So small things like he warms up the, uh, my side of the bed at night, you know, when we go to bed, he warms that up for me because he knows I really hate a cold bed. Um, and even things like, you know, he buys me flowers often, even years after being married, he still buys me flowers without a reason. Um, and, you know, even things like he still leaves love notes around the house for me to find them, you know, the small things that um, make me feel appreciated and let me know that he loves me. That's Thanks. awesome. Um, on, on my end, yeah, Diana, those so many countless things, you know, it, it is very hard to, to keep track of, but um, something that uh, she does, for example, is she invests a lot, a lot of time into um, stepping up our health game. Like she studies so, so much about what we should eat, what we should do, and so on and so forth. And I'm equally a fanatic of health as, as she is, or she has become, I don't know if she started doing it so much because of me, but she knows I love it. Because she keeps studying things like, you know, um, how to, like what we should eat and then how do you make that food tasty, mm. right? And then she figures that out for both of us and then we both enjoy it. And so she dedicates a lot of time every single year to keep stepping up our game. Um, she maintains uh, relationships with my parents, right? And, and my family and, you know, she keeps... I say it, you know, like she's like my family PR manager, you know, like she's, <laughs> she makes sure everyone's happy, everyone's informed, you know, um, everything is going smoothly, you know, and everyone is getting the um, holiday pictures, you know, all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and uh, I also something that's, that's important for me is that one of the things that I really know that uh, she loves me and she's committed to the relationship is that whatever isn't okay we can have a discussion about it and she will immediately improve like immediately like you guys have no idea how quickly she just takes feedback and she will never be the same again it's so weird i've never seen it <laughs> i've never seen it in my coaching clients like it's so interesting and she changes immediately like for example and I'm going to show you guys something like that's very private. Not long ago, I had a, a stressful week, a very stressful week. And Diana asked me to help her with something. And I, 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 did, I wasn't in the energy, right? I didn't, it's not that I didn't want to help her. I said, okay, let's do it. And then she read my energy like I don't want to. Like she misread the energy, right? Like, but I couldn't say anything because I was very pissed off at some mistakes that some people have made uselessly and they've been told not to do it and so on that you know can cause us because i like my companies are already making millions so whenever someone makes too many mistakes one after the other you lose hundreds of thousands of dollars for no good reason right i'm like i, I just i just feel i lost a quarter million dollars today and, and I, I can't do anything about this i'm that's the energy right where i i'm at and then she shows up and like could we shoot a two minute video about this? I'm like, okay, yes, we can. Obviously I'm gonna say yes, right? Because I love her, but my energy wasn't there. And so she, she felt that and she said, okay, if you really don't wanna do it, then, you know, and she used to do something which after that day, she's never done since. She said, okay, you know what? If you don't wanna do it, I'm never gonna ask you again. I'm like Diana, we talked about ultimatums. No, we don't talk like that in this relationship, right? It's like, but blah, blah, blah. And I get, I got where she was coming from. She was like mimicking my energy. And I snapped. 
I couldn't because this was like a series of like three days in which people were just screwing up <laughs> every day. Like everything that could go wrong was going wrong like every day. That's business, by the way. It just happens. It doesn't matter how, how wealthy you become, how many businesses you have, how much money they make. You know, some like people just shock you sometimes with the stuff that they do. Mm -hmm. So the, there's three days. And I was keeping it in myself because I said, well, like, why share that negative emotion? Like, it doesn't make any sense because it will be over tomorrow. I, at least I hope, right? It will be over tomorrow. And then I can discuss it as an FYI. This happened this week. You know, a very different conversation. Not when you're in it. And so I couldn't. And I snapped. You know, I said, look, you know what? <laughs> and I said, this and this and this and this and this happened. And I, I say, like, these are seven things that just happened. And that's why I am the way I am. I don't need you to push your love away. I need you to love me more when you see me in this energy, because that's what I need. I need love. I need you to be affectionate. I need you to be there supportive. The last thing I need on these three stressful days is you saying, you know what? I'm never going to do this with you. That's the last thing I need, right? because you're the most important individual in my life. How can you say this in this critical moment? You can't. And let me explain why you can't, and this is how you should be, right? And I kid you not, since then I've had, you know, various other stressful moments, and she has been so supportive all the time, you know, all the time. And I told her very clearly even then, I don't need to, you to tell me it's going to be all right. I don't need to tell you, you to tell me anything, because I don't believe in that. That's fluff. You know, people say that stuff just because they don't know what to do. What I need you to do is love me, hug me, just support me, give me some space, you know, just, just be who you are. Be, be the best version of yourself, just the exact way you are. And that's all I need, because that's a great reminder of how I should be grateful in my life. No matter what happens in my career, I, I always have this to be grateful for, right? And she's been doing it ever since. And I kid you not, like various things have happened, as I said, and almost nothing is affecting me like literally I, I go through it and i say okay well i'll just deal with it but it's not affecting me anymore so that's wonderful yeah. diana and robert we want to thank you so much for being on our podcast today <laughs> thank you you know thank sharing you so stories is something that human beings have been doing since the beginning of time to grow and heal and bond and we hope that by you guys sharing your story it's enriched your lives and the lives of our listeners we want to thank all of you for joining us today on Couples Synergy. Our passion is in helping couples and people have happy and healthy relationships. And this podcast gives us a fun way of bringing our knowledge and expertise to you, our listeners. For all of you listening, please let us know how you enjoyed the show. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couples Synergy and our programs such as Relationship 101, our home study course, the Couples Weekend Intensive, and our premier coaching program called Couple to Couple, look us up online at couplesynergy.com. And if you know someone who can benefit from this episode, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. Until next time, synergize your life and synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez.